Millions of gamers can remember with some form of endearment many hours spent getting lost, flying above Azeroth, and feeling deeply immersed in the fantastic world of Warcraft. And out of these millions of gamers, very few might contest. Blizzard's most enchanting tool is the award-winning music that their artists create. We had the chance to speak to Neil Ackrey, whose work also includes StarCraft II and Diablo III. A fan of movies and their music from a very early age, Neil's first records were soundtracks by John Williams, Jerry Goldsmith and James Horner. Though originally planning a career in art, his early experiments in electronic music began to take over his life. After studying classical, ethnic and electronic music, Neil began to see that film scoring was the ideal outlet for his love of movies and music. Soon after, his childhood love for video games that began with an Atari 2600 would find a new outlet in writing music for games when he scored the opening cinematic to The Burning Crusade in 2006. Games would offer a whole new world to play in musically and give Neil the opportunity to work with large orchestras featuring some of the finest musicians in the world. The first question of our interview puts on the forefront of the conversation the fact that we're a young company run by PC gamers across the country. And as one of our founding philosophies, we strive to gain a better understanding of the career paths taken by the artists behind the games we love. Therefore, Neil, we'd like to spend the first part of this interview understanding how you went from early experiments in instrumental music to scoring the opening cinematic for a game like World of Warcraft. Maybe you could share some of the challenges you faced throughout the years and some of the successes that inspired you in in hope that, that your message might bring some wisdom to musicians in our team. Well, I started doing a lot of film stuff, film and TV. Um, you know, I scored a lot of student films and eventually ended up doing movies. I worked for the composer Joel Goldsmith, who's the son of Jerry Goldsmith. And that led to... Um, working on the Stargate SG-1 series with him. And, um, you know, I was doing that for several years, and uh, eventually um, that kind of transitioned into games because I had an agent at the time that uh, was a little more focused on games than, than I had been up until that point and wanted to, you know, try to get me into doing some game stuff. And I always loved the idea of it because I've been a gamer since my first Atari 2600 when I was a little kid. And, um, you know, I'm, it was, I managed to get an audition on World of Warcraft Burning Crusade. And Can you tell us about you know, that? I'm very interested to hear more about your first time with the team and how something like that all goes down. Because 2006 might be nearly a decade ago, but Blizzard was already the major studio. It yeah, is they today. had already, World of Warcraft had already come out and they were, they were already pretty big. It was one of those, one of those things that, hadn't happened before hasn't happened since and it's unlikely anyone's going to have a similar experience as I did but I was just in the right place at the right time my agent was you know trying to get me uh, trying to get them to listen to my music and I'm sure they were bombarded with people's music all the time and um, he helped them try to get a hold of somebody else and it's kind of a long story but as a favor to him they said okay well we'll listen to your clients <laughs> And they, they listened to my stuff, and I, I just happened to have a, a similar sound to what they were looking for. And uh, they gave me a chance to audition by, you know, scoring uh, scoring like sort of a, a, a test project. And um, they liked what I did, and the rest is and history. And I'm assuming you must have been pretty happy with the news. That kind of thing just never happened. And I've had many other chances, opportunities where I've worked for other companies and, and audition like that and, and you know nothing ever came of it. But the one time it did happen happened to be for the biggest game company and on the biggest game and it was yeah. you know I'm really grateful that that happened. Yeah. And you've spent the early stages of your career working for Hollywood and you got to know many of the iconic composers in that industry. We're talking about guys like James Horner, Hans Zimmer, Jerry Goldsmith so when it comes to composing, I'm curious to find out um, what would you say are the main differences between working for the big picture and working for the video gaming industry? Are you going to find some opportunities, for example, in the PC universe that are not common to cinema? And, and if so, how do you foresee the gaming industry evolving in regards to, to such realities? 
the main difference between scoring a film and scoring a game uh, is is the time frame. Uh, you know, a, a a game might be anywhere from you know three or four months to over a year in, in the development process. Uh, whereas a film was usually about you know four to six weeks, and for for about the same amount of music, so if, you know on a film just you know, you kind of have to knock stuff out really quick, and you know the the budget it's it's different at different levels. But I'll say the the budget of the movies that I've been working on lately, and the budget of the games I've been working on lately are very different. So the you know budget for the films will often not allow for more than you know three or four musicians so i'll do you know record a a vocalist or a solo cello or something just to kind of have something live in there to to get a you know a human feel to it Mm -hmm. but on the game side of things it's 99 percent real full orchestra and i'm grateful for the chance to work with musicians because there's nothing like it and that's really the reason i got into this in the first place is you know the the chance to work with real musicians and so you you don't actually score the music from afar you're actually in the midst of it all you from in in every step of the process yeah everything from you know the initial uh you know meeting where we we look at gameplay footage or artwork or i do a lot of the cinematics which involves actually watching the little you know four minute movie and talking about the timing and then i'll go and i'll write it and then we'll go back and forth with the director and kind of fine tune things and the timing changes over a few months I'll make adjustments and stuff like that eventually we record it with the orchestra and I mix it and deliver it you know the full the full product and and who would you say is the person you work with the most uh, in the Blizzard team to to get the product delivered the relationship with the audio director is key you know Russell Brower from Blizzard is is the mastermind behind all of it he's the one that assembles the composing team that gets everyone to create conceptual pieces based on their initial reaction to the artwork and stuff and we do talk to the game team on occasion but russell's really the the one overseeing all of that so it's it's important for any any composer the the audio director is the representative of everything audio for a game company And they're in charge of how the game's going to sound and, you know, musically what ideas are going to be, you know, talked about. And uh, there's kind of the ringleader in that sense. And then, yeah, the, the, the game team, there's, there's always somebody in charge of, like, the overall, you know, game development. Or, in, in, again, in the case of Blizzard Cinematics, there's a whole different department that just does cinematics. And yeah. everyone, everyone tries to work together and, and create a cohesive project. So there's a lot of communication involved. And working with gamers, because I assume most people at Blizzard are gamers. How do you compare the team spirit that's going to come out of such experiences from, from the ones you might have had in the film industry? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, the gaming industry is on one hand a lot more open and people are seems like a lot more laid back to me um you know you you go to like game developers conference and people are you know like everyone's just hanging out at the bar and it's really relaxed but at the same time you know games because of the you're you're developing a game over several years and and there's just so much at stake there's a lot more secrecy about how the game like what the games are being made how they're being made you tend to not hear about games until right when they come out Or maybe you'll hear some rumors here and there, but on the film film side of things, it's a little more open. Like you'll kind of you'll hear about this movie's being cast, and you know here's who's going to direct it. So, so, that, so, so you're actually saying that there's more secrecy in the video gaming world than there is in in the film industry, at least in terms of the the products being made. Um, that's you know, for example, like I I'm working on a couple things I can't even legally tell you about. But if I was if I was sure. if I was working on a movie right now, I could tell you about it. You know, I I'm not at the moment, but if I was, there wouldn't be any issues talking about. It. I've never signed an NDA for a movie. They, you know, not to say they don't exist. So but, do you think do you think the gaming industry is a lot tighter than than the film industry because of I dare to say a lack of experience uh, in the sense that Hollywood's been up and going for a hundred years and 
and the gaming world is, is still booming in, in a way. Um, yeah, maybe. It, it is kind of like the gaming industry is, is certainly it's young and they're kind of figuring stuff out that maybe Hollywood figured out, you know, a while ago. And on one hand, that's really cool. It's, you know, it's a chance, you know, to, to do things differently, to see how Hollywood did it and maybe do things a little differently. It's It's different, but ultimately at the end of the day, you know, Games and films are just are they're telling stories yeah. and you know they're trying to entertain people so there there's more similarities than there are differences I think. Zooming in on the expansion uh, Warlords of Drainer, how did you approach the project? Uh, because Blizzard made the decision to to pull out of Pandaria and and really bring us back to the nest. So how does one go about approaching the music for an expansion intent on bringing the player back to the game's origins uh, with a story wrapped around the orcs? Did you bring that spirit with you the, the first time you sat down to, to start scoring? I, I never, tr I try to never think about, you know, who's playing the game or, you know, what they're going to think of the music or trying to bring more people back or anything like that. I just... Whatever the, the project is, I try to do the best I can to tell the best story possible. And in this case, <clears throat> excuse me, there was certainly an opportunity to, to, to kind of go back and do, you know, do something a little more like the original game. Pandaria was in a completely different direction. And, right. you know, musically, musically, it was, I, I had so much fun with that one. And it's just such a different thing but it was it was a lot of fun to kind of go and, and focus on like a more savage more like to play around with kind of the iron age you know bronze age kind of yeah. tonalities and stuff and you know just looked at the artwork looked at the cinematic and you know it's just kind of a lot of the I'm, I'm very inspired visually so when i see artwork when i see the the stuff they're they're giving me i just get ideas right away and I, I kind of focus on that and, and tune out a lot of the other stuff. I don't if I get too focused on you know what are the players going to think and and this and that, then I just I end up getting you know kind of clenched up and I can't really create if I focus too much on the outcome because it's a it's a process it's a, it's an organic process that kind of the the more you force inspiration to happen, the less it happens. Well, let's talk uh, about Mist of Pandaria for a second because scoring the music for that expansion, with all due respect, must have driven you right out of your comfort zone. To say the least, it was unusual for a studio like Blizzard to throw the um, Warcraft lore into the Oriental cultures of the past. How did you approach this? Was it a challenge at all? And, and did you prepare yourself for the task at hand? Did, did you have to stretch your mind creatively? Yeah, I, I, I grew up on... It sounds silly to say I grew up on kung fu movies. My dad used to <laughs> play them all the time. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's... So I've, I've always been a fan of, of that kind of music and the culture. And it's, it's such a different language that the only way to really write in it to have those melodies coming out of your head without forcing them is to just completely immerse yourself to listen to a bunch of different uh, music in, in those scales and those the melodies are longer and more drawn out the instruments are different so I just listened to a lot of stuff and, but I did found, find that it came very naturally I was kind of surprised that I didn't you know I after an initial kind of immersion phase I, I kind of I wrote a lot of the themes that I wrote for that game like in just a few days like it all just kind of boom came out. Yeah. Mist of Pandaria, the the music really captured the feel of the game I think. And a lot of people were skeptical of that expansion because of the very fact it moved us away from the vibe that makes us love this game and and that's the epic ambient, the orcish ways, the rolling drums of war. That soon be over because of the panda, as they said. Um, but the fact is, it didn't, and and it's the music, at least in my opinion, that had us embrace the delivered experience and and endorse the changes they made. You kept the tribal sounds and and you carried it through the expansion, uh, just in a different shape and form. It was welcomed. It it was refreshing, and and I think that's a compliment to artists like you. Well, thank you. I mean, ult ultimately, it came out of whatever however asian it might have been it still came out of 
our voices and and you know we are western composers we've we have our all of our training and our experience in in the west so everything's going to be filtered through that you know and i I wanted to mention also real quick that i i I worked on a game recently a chinese mmo called revelation that's also in the the chinese realm and i i got to work in that that uh kind of vibe again and and take it even further and and somebody had had told me that they were what do you mean by take it even further oh uh, further further into the you know asian realm to make it you know i wasn't trying to make it sound like a a asian version of of world of warcraft i was trying to go even further in to make it sound even more chinese even more authentic and you know someone had had mentioned how you know it, it's it sounds like Chinese video game music, and I remember thinking you know that was me trying to make it fully Chinese, and ultimately you know I just I have a I have a a, a voice that just comes out in everything I do, and I you know you can't help it. Well, thanks a lot, Neil. Uh, we like to close the interviews with just a couple questions, if you don't mind, from the people who've been listening live. Uh, we like to connect the artists to the gamers and uh, to this end I'm going to introduce Josh into this conversation um, actually we have a, we have a couple questions from the Twitch feed um, we have a couple ones on inspiration uh, Zent- Zensis asks uh, if you're inspired by any other artists yeah um, absolutely um, you know in the, in the case of uh, working on World of Warcraft you know working with the other composers like Russell Brower and everyone else on the team it's it's you get inspired by each other's work for sure and then Jason Hayes's original themes I, I get to use those you know I've, I've used them throughout the years and it's great to be inspired by that you know I, I got into this because of John Williams because of Empire Strikes Back you know when I was a little kid I saw it and you know fell in love with it and you know I, I've got got to tell him more than once that that Empire Strikes Back is the reason I became a composer and uh, you know Howard Shore I, I you know the Lord of the Rings scores are are favorites of mine Jerry B 216 asks what kind of real world events have been inspirational to your compositions yeah that's that's a, that's a great question and, and I certainly um, you know life is a, a big factor in music and Uh, whether or not you want it to be, you know, in the, in the case of, um, I'll just just relate it to this uh, this expansion to to Warlords of Draenor. I um, I was working on the music for uh, Negrand, and uh, you know my my grandmother died, and there was something. I, I just I was I put all of my feelings about it and my emotions into the music and kind of came up with something that as much as I as I was trying to write a piece that would be appropriate for the area and you know what would, would, would satisfy the needs of the game there was I just kind of, I found myself being pulled in a, in a completely different direction than I had ever been pulled and you know Negrand and, and Shadow Moon um, Shadow Moon Valley both kind of were just somehow somehow it came out of the you know, the grief of, of that and it's that's just kind of how it how it happens sometimes uh, I, I can attest to that Shadow Moon I played the beta for a little bit and the music in that was beautiful oh thank you let us close the call on two simple questions Neil uh, the first one is what's next for you uh, good question and, and I'm, I'm grateful for the, the opportunity to write the music that I get to write to work with the musicians I get to work with to get to tell stories on you know some really fantastic games and you know movies here and there and you know i i'm happy as long as i'm get to do this as long as i get to make music i'm happy so it's hard for me to say that i want want anything specific to happen i'm just i'm i've been very lucky to be you know work to working on these games and to see the recognition they've got and you know i wouldn't change a thing And the second question is a little bit more complex, Neil. Um, you see, we have a lot of aspiring musicians and, and artists on the team uh, that want to get started, that, that don't really know where to go and, and could use a few words of wisdom from you. Well, there's no pressure there, huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, I, I always, I tell people, you know, you have to really love it. You have to want, you have to be okay starving 
to, you know, I, I would rather starve than do anything else. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because there was a lot of times along the way that it would have been a lot easier to give up. There's, it's just, it could be a really challenging career. A lot of competition, a lot of late nights and, and a lot of rejection. And, you know, not a lot of people understand just how difficult it is to create music and the value of music the value of people that that create and um you know not everyone along the way is going to be really nice and pat you on the head every time you you know you make something and and you kind of have to develop a, a thick skin and you just have to do it because you love it not because you're trying to you know have build a career in it and and if you know in, in my case i think every time i've i've i, I look back and i and i see a lot of accomplishments that I'm very proud of, but I was never thinking about those things in the moment. Everything I've done up until this point, I've done because I I loved it. I wanted to do the best I could. I wanted to make the client happy. I wanted to make the, the players happy and really wanted to, to be the best you know composer I can be. And that's the reason I do it. So if, if you're lucky and you really put your heart and soul into it, then people will notice that. People will you know, will hire you and they'll hire you again because you were easy to work with and you were hardworking and, you know, that's, that's, that's all you can really do because beyond that, you know, it's, it's really hard to say what, what specifically it is that gets any of us anywhere. Well, one thing's for sure, Neil, is that we already took too much of your time. We want to sincerely thank you for doing this. Uh, we thoroughly enjoyed the interview and wish you the very, very best. Thank you so much. Yes, it was really likewise. my pleasure. Thank you. You guys have a great night. You too.